we kind of talked about this a few weeks ago where when we were talking about OBJ, I was going, man, I don't know. The Jets situation doesn't seem the best for him, right? I mean, just because there are some other weapons, Garrett Wilson's clearly the guy that they want to kind of form the passing offense around. Alan Lazard, you know, is going to have a real spot there as well. You know, Corey Davis, I think, was the all, all – everybody all thought that was the guy that might have been in trouble if OBJ was signed by the New York Jets. But, yeah, I, you know, I think ultimately OBJ is in a better spot for himself. And, yeah, I'm not so sure this doesn't make things a little less complicated for the Jets and one less little – area of drama for a team that is going to be under the microscope this year you know it's it's Aaron Rodgers it's the Jets it's New York the Jets are really talented as we've discussed last week I mean the roster is top notch they're kind of just missing the quarterback that's it that's why they've gone all in on this Aaron Rodgers thing so yeah Mike it's uh I'm excited for it I really am it's going to be awesome up here in the area the area is buzzing about it still You know, Jets fans are getting antsy because it is Aaron Rodgers and they're scared he might change his mind, right? But I think you're saying it right. At the end of the day, he's going to be here and it's the perfect fit for for him and and for the Jets for what they need right now. And think about the depth chart in Baltimore and think about the depth chart with the Jets. You got Garrett Wilson and Alan Lazard. OBJ's number three at best with the Jets. He's got the chance to be the number one guy. Right. As the Ravens right. receivers go, compete with Rashad Bateman. Rashad yeah. Bateman is the next best option that they have as a number one receiver. So, and you're you're not paying him to be a number three receiver. You're not paying 15 million guaranteed with the opportunity to make three million more for the guy that is going to be buried on the depth chart. He's clearly one of your starters. He's clearly one of your best options. He's a guy you've made a massive investment in financially. You're going to use him now. Whether or not the ball is being thrown his way a sufficient number of times is a separate issue. But you got to be on the field to even be in position to have the ball thrown your right, way. Right. He would have been WR3 with the New York Jets. So that's another that's another factor that I think draws him to Baltimore versus New York. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think that you know there's a chance here where he can be the go-to guy to where they could get through training camp and – oh, wait, he looks great and has a good game or two to start the season, and they start to go, no, we're going to formulate more plays, more of the offense around his skill set, right? And I I do. I think he's in a perfect spot here, let alone, you know, there's, like you said, there's no personality like that at the receiver position on their team right now. He can really bond and have a personal relationship with Lamar Jackson that way. So, yeah, I think it makes sense for him. The Jets, yes, we're not desperate for his talents like you said. They got receivers. They got pretty good running back, tight end play. They got it all there. You know? So I think it's best for both the worlds in, in this department. And, uh, uh, I, you know, again, I, I didn't know if the OBJ thing was going to happen. Uh, and I wonder if, like, do you think the, the Ravens got an inkling as far as what the Jets were going to pay him maybe? Or did they just say, forget it, we don't even want the Jets to have a chance to flirt with them, so we'll just overpay you to end this conversation right now? I don't think they were competing with the Jets. I don't think they were anywhere in the same ballpark. I was hearing yesterday it was going to be a low base salary with very high upside depending upon contribution, playing time, et cetera. And again, the depth chart doesn't lie. They paid Alan Lazard a ton of money as a free agent. Yep. And Garrett Wilson had a great rookie season and shows a ton of promise. OBJ was going to potentially get lost in the shuffle in the New York offense. They got Brees Hall coming back. They love their running back room. There's only one football. OBJ, yeah, I'm playing with Aaron Rodgers, but so what if he's not throwing me the football, if I'm not on the field, if I'm only out there in three receiver sets and I'm not getting nearly the kind of reps and targets that I deserve as OBJ. The Ravens are paying him like the guy that is going to be the guy in the passing game, and uh, I don't think it was even close uh, what the Jets were going to do. And, and again, no. we talked about the motivations and the arguments and uh, the, the the Lamar Jackson magnet that OBJ may become. Right. But uh, to get this thing done the way they did it, they had to make a bold move, and they timed it just right because Beckham was going yeah. to see the Jets today. And they just gave McCall Hardman hey, look, a one-year deal too, right? Am I wrong? Was it a two-year deal or was it a one-year deal? But I, the, So they've they're already gone that's down. True. Right? I forgot about him. Yeah, they've gone down yep. this line of already like, hey, we're giving the young potential or this guy the, the money and the, the one-year deal. Right, it was a one-year deal. So, you know, as far as McCole Hardman there, that's another guy that complicates things and, and is a similar skill set to OBJ 
as far as the weapon we talk about, right? Reverses, speed sweeps, all of that to where he would take away OBJ's touches in that department as well. Yeah, I think for the Jets, this was a luxury. This was a buy low. This is a bargain basement if we can get it. Right. Because no one else is offering him big money. Right. But it was just enough of an impetus to get the Ravens to do what they did to get it done. And uh, again, this gets back to having an agent and not having an agent. Maybe the agent had something to do with setting this up just right. Scheduling that visit to the Jets to get the Ravens to up their offer because, again, the report last week was the Ravens had made an offer. Gee, how did that get leaked? Do you think the Ravens leaked it or do you think the agent leaked it? So the agent gets it out there that the Ravens have made an offer and then, oh, OBJ is going to see the Jets and one day before he's going to see the Jets, the Ravens get the deal done. Again, having an agent doesn't just mean having someone who negotiates directly with the team the terms of the offer. It's having somebody who is the master of the broader game to get the offers to the point where they need to be. And it was either accidental or intentional. If it was intentional, bravo, OBJ's agent. You played it just right and got your guy up to $18 million with $15 million guaranteed, something no one thought OBJ was going to get. When we return, something no one other than Carson Palmer believes when it comes to who the best quarterback is in the <laughs> National You're Football funny. League. We'll do that when PFG Live <laughs> continues right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.